In this video, I'm gonna talk about the child tax credit for 2020. Now, first I'm gonna go over the rules for the child tax credit, and then we're gonna answer the question of whether or not your child qualifies for the child tax credit or the credit for other dependents. So I'm gonna go through a walkthrough to help you figure this out really quickly and simply. And then we're gonna go over the W-4. Why? Because the child tax credit's on it. And if you're getting the child tax credit, you may have made this error that I've seen so much this year already. So I wanna make sure that you're getting the biggest paycheck possible. So I'm gonna go into the W-4 on the child tax credit. And then last, but certainly not least, if you earn too much, there's a planning technique that you need to know to make sure you still qualify for the child tax credit or the credit for other dependents. But before we do all of this, if this is your first time at our channel or you haven't subscribed, click on the subscribe button at the bottom. My name is Travis Sickle, Certified Financial Planner, helping you reach your financial goals. So there's a ton that we're gonna cover in this video. So to make it a little bit easier, I'm gonna put the time codes in the description at the bottom. So you can just go ahead and zip right to the section that you wanna watch or go watch another section, come back to it later, whatever you wanna do. So we're gonna jump right into it. So the child tax credit is a $2,000 credit. That is a lot of money. So it's very important you understand what this is. So a credit goes against your tax liability. So guess what? If you owe the IRS $2,000 as a tax bill, a credit, that $2,000 credit, will make that tax bill gone. So it's dollar for dollar. A credit reduces your tax liability. Now a deduction is a little different. That is your 401k or your traditional IRA. Now making those contributions reduce your taxable income, but it's not as impactful as a credit. So it's very important that you make sure you get as many credits as possible because these things are gold. So the child tax credit is 2000 per child and that's 2,000, no matter if you have one, two, three, four, five, doesn't matter how many children you have, it's 2,000 times the amount of each child. So if you have two children, it's four, three, six, so on and so forth. So it is a huge credit, a huge amount of money that you can save on your tax liability, $2,000. Now it is a refundable credit, so what does that mean? If you don't have a tax liability, you can still get a $1,400 refund for each child. So that is quite a big credit, quite a big deal. So you want to make sure that you're getting this right. Now, in order to qualify for this credit, you have to have earned income of at least $2,500. So that's your W-2 income. That's your 1099 income, combat pay, which is not taxable. So there's a ton of different types of income that qualify, but it has to be earned income. Now, in order to qualify, now this is the big one. This is the age test. Your child has to be 16 or younger, so under the age of 17. Now they can't be 17. And this is as of December 31st of the tax year that you're doing this for. So that is how old they are, that they are, or what they qualify for. So it's 16 or younger. If they're 17, doesn't matter. They're in high school, they're still living at home, you're still paying for them, but guess what? They're, in, they're not for the child tax credit. It goes under the credit for other dependents. So it's only $500 and it's not refundable either. Really important that you get this right because if you make a mistake, it's possible that you could get disqualified moving forward. So even if you do qualify in future years, you could lose that qualification to use this tax credit because it's such a big deal to use the child tax credit because it's saving you a ton of money. The IRS wants to make sure that you're getting this right and they're getting their taxes. So you wanna make sure that you get the child tax credit done correctly. And it's under the age of 17, on December 31st of the tax year that you're looking at. So you need to make sure that's done correctly. So for 2020, if they're 17 on December 31st of 2020, then guess what? They don't qualify because they're 17. Now if they're 16 on December 31st, they're qual they qualify, so you're good to go. So it's really important that you get that done correctly. Now, the other one is, so we had the, the income limit on the bottom side was $2,500, so at least $2,500 worth of earned income. Now, the income on the high side, where it, where it, phase, where it begins to phase out, not actually phases out, begins to phase out. For singles, that's going to be $200,000, and for married filing jointly, that's going to be $400,000. But it's really important that you understand that that is the beginning of the phase out. It doesn't phase out at $200,000 and $400,000. So you, you need to understand that if you are in those 
upper end of the income limits, then it's 200 for singles, 400 married filing jointly. Now let's jump into the qualification test because there's a whole bunch of different criteria, including the income and including that age test I talked about before. But if you're questioning whether or not you qualify for the child tax credit beyond that, then it's a really good idea just to go through this walkthrough. I'm gonna leave a link in the description at the bottom for this interactive walkthrough. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's for the child tax credit and credit for other dependents. So let's go ahead and jump right in and walk through it together so you can see exactly what it looks like. All right, so here we go. So does my child dependent qualify for the child tax credit or the credit for other dependents? And again, I'm gonna leave that link in the description at the bottom, scroll to the bottom and click begin. We're gonna click continue right there. Now this is only gonna be for the 2019 tax year for this particular walkthrough on the whether or not your child qualifies, but it will be the same for 2020. Okay, so the marital status. So for this walkthrough, I'm gonna do married. I am married, so I'm gonna check off married. If you're single, check off single. Now, do you intend to file a return with your spouse? Do you and your spouse intend to file a joint tax return for 2019? I'm gonna check off yes, click continue. And here's where you can add your kids. Now, this is just a calculator, so you do not actually need to put their names in there. You can just go ahead and put whatever you want and just click on add and then, so I'm gonna put kid one. If you have multiple kids, just click, keep clicking add so it knows that they're in there. So now on this screen, it's gonna ask whether or not you have a valid social security number. So I'm gonna check off yes and same for your spouse. So, so social security number is one of the requirements. Your child also needs a social security number at the time that you're filing your taxes. So if you don't already have a social security number, it's important that you get one. Now this is the question where it's asking if in the prior year, was it disallowed for the credit? So it's really looking for the fraud, but it, it already has determined that. So if you got disallowed, the IRS has already told you that's how you would know. And you can see there for reasons other than math or clerical, because if you made a, a, a silly error and it was just a math or clerical error, they'll, they'll probably forgive you. Um, but this, this will already be figured out in advance. So if you don't know that you qualify at this point, you probably qualify because the IRS would tell you. So I'm gonna check off no and click continue. Now this is the relationship test. It's gonna give you all the different relations and I am gonna put biological child and the birth date is really important. So make sure that you get this correct. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make this up 2015. No doubt about it, that this child is under 17. So here is the question where it's asking, does the kid, does kid one, whatever name you put in there, have a social security number valid for employment that was issued before the due date of your return? That's important. You need to, you need to have the social security for the child before the due date of the return. So we're gonna check off, yes. Now, if that's not true, unfortunately, you don't qualify. That's what That's what it would tell you at the end, but that doesn't mean you don't qualify for anything. You might qualify for credits for other dependents. Are you claiming kid one in this in this walkthrough? Are you claiming kid one as a dependent for 2019? Yes. Can you not take the child tax credit? Sure, you can pay the IRS as much as you want. They'll take it, they'll take the money. Citizenship test, yes, US citizen, next. Now this one might trip some people up. So if you're looking at this, this is talking about the residency test. That's what this is. Did they live with you for more than half the year? The IRS doesn't care much about anything else. Any divorce decrees, if you're single, they don't really care about any of that stuff. It is, according to them, the IRS, it's more than half the year. So it says it right there, more than half the year. Now this can include all of these other pieces. So if, if there's an illness and they're in the hospital for a couple of months, even six months, seven months, it doesn't matter. All that time would qualify for the residency test that they're living with you. And so you wouldn't have an issue there. Education, if they're away at school, they still qualify. Business, the business one kind of struck me a little funny, but I don't I don't know. Maybe, you're, maybe your child's a, some sort of a movie star and they're never home. They're just always traveling they would still qualify. Vacation and or military service. So 
it must be reasonable to assume that the absent person will return to the home after the temporary absence. So in this case, we're going to choose yes. They've lived with us for more than half the year. And here on the last screen is your results. So you can see it right there in kind of bold, not very big, but kind of bold. It says kid one is a qualifying person for child tax credit purposes. Now, why does it say it like that? Here's why. If you realized it did not ask your income, it just gave you the maximum amount that you can earn. So it doesn't tell you whether or not you're going to actually get the child tax credit, but it tells you of whether or not your child just qualifies for the child tax credit or the credit for other dependents. So it was asking things like your social security numbers, citizenship, to make sure that they lived with you for more than half the year, all those basic things to qualify or disqualify from the child tax credit, but they didn't ask those income questions. So let's go ahead and jump now to the IRS form W-4 to make sure you're filling that out correctly with the child tax credit. And it's important that you make sure that you fill it out correctly because if you qualify for the child tax credit, you're actually gonna get it and you fill it out on your W-4, then guess what? You're gonna get a bigger paycheck because they are assuming you're getting the child tax credit which will reduce your total tax liability. If you didn't apply for the child tax credit on your W-4 and you do qualify, go ahead and fill out a new W-4 and submit it to your employer to hopefully boost your paycheck. So I'm gonna walk through to show you exactly where you should put it on the IRS form W-4 and also how you should fill it out. Now I'm gonna go through the online version. I do a ton of videos on the IRS form W-4 and I can't stress this enough to use the online version because it's so much simpler. It's gonna be right, it's gonna be accurate, it's gonna make your life so much easier. And at the very end, it'll populate all the PDF, all the stuff that you need. You just need to print it out and submit it to your employer and you're good to go. Doing the paper version is a lot more work. Now I've done some videos on the paper version exclusively, so you can watch those but let's go ahead and jump into the online version so I can point out where I see the number one mistake with the child tax credit and people messing it up and getting smaller paychecks because of it. So let's go ahead and look at that. All right, so here is the tax withholding estimator for your W-4. So scroll right down, click on that blue button, use the tax withholdings estimator. Now I'm gonna go through this as fast as possible so we can see exactly where that tax credit section, which is number five right there. And I'm going to zip through it. I'm not going to go through any of the other stuff except the tax credits. So you can just see exactly how to fill it out. So first I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go, we're going to go married filing jointly. Can someone else claim you as a dependent on their tax return? No, that's important because if you're claiming somebody, you can't be claimed. So that's really important that you make sure you, you get that section right. So no, no one else can claim us on their tax return. Yes, you have to have a dependent to get the child tax credit. So we're gonna say one. And then we're gonna say, yes, we have a job. I'm gonna say I have one job, spouse has no job to make this a little bit easier. Pension, no, just for, again, for ease of use. Click next. I'm gonna say yes to the job. We had it all year, every two weeks or twice a month, doesn't matter. Check off January 1st. Oops, January 1st there, there we go. Total wages, I'm just gonna put in $100,000 just so we can see percentage wise or whatnot to see how it works. If I put it down too low, you might not see the credit reflected quite the same way you would with $100,000. Okay, 401k, no, HSA, no. Need to fill those things out too. So this is the year to date withholdings. I'm just gonna put 500 and 100 from my last paycheck. Again, I'm just zipping through this. Don't even pay attention to this part. Just uh, stick with me. We're gonna get through this quickly. We're gonna take the standard deduction, which is $24,800. That's a big deal. But we're gonna take that for married filing jointly and this. So for this page, we're just gonna check off, just gonna get the results. I wanna show you what that looks like. We're gonna click on next. And you see right there, our tax liability is $8,132. So let's go back to this section really quickly, the tax credit section. Most important part of this whole walkthrough. Let's zoom in here and go to see tax credits. Zoom in here, right there, that first one. The child and dependent related 
that first box, that drop down, how many children qualify that are under the age of 17? Qualifying children under 17. I'm going to put one. Let's see what it does. I'm going to put one there, click next, and it drops to 6,632. Now you might be thinking, well, wait a second, that only dropped by $1,500, not the full 2,000. So the reason is, the reason that did that, and it only dropped by 1,500, was because we already got the 500 for the dependent credit. So the credit for other dependents, which is $500. So it already calculated that because on that first screen, we put that we had one dependent. So it's Mary filing jointly with one dependent. It was already assuming at the very least, given all the other information that we put in there, that we were at least going to get the $500 credit for the credit for other dependents. Now we flipped it over to the child tax credit. So it gave us the additional $1,500. So it is in fact the full $2,000. How would you know? If you scroll all the way to the bottom, the details, the details, 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 it will be here somewhere. There it is. Child tax credit, $2,000. You can see it. So it's giving you all the information in the breakdown. So if you wanted to know, that's how you can figure it out. So $2,000. Now that PDF I talked about, it's right here. All you need to do is click on it. So I will click on it. Now, once you click on it, you can't come back and edit this thing. Unfortunately, that's a flaw. I don't know if it's my iPad or if it's just how this program works, but it gives you a printout of the W-4 that you could print out and it makes the adjustment for you. Now you can see right there, it put the child tax credit for the, of $2,000 and it made the adjustment. Now, why did it make the adjustment? That's confusing. Why can't I just put 2000 in that section? Because it's a $2,000 credit, right? For the claiming the dependents in section three. Well, it made the adjustment because of the income that I put in previously. And in addition to that, how much I've already withheld year to date. And it determined that I have withheld too much money so far and I'm going to withhold too much. So I needed to make an adjustment. It does it for you. That's the nice thing about doing the online version. It'll make sure that your paychecks are really as big as possible. So you're getting the least amount of a refund because a refund is not a good thing. If you think you're going to get a, re a huge refund, like it's a good thing. It's not. It it's money that you already had. It's like basically giving the IRS a free loan. So the less of a refund that you're going to get, the better off you're going to be. What that means is bigger paychecks. So you're going to get that money today. So what can you do with that money? You could save it. You could put it in the bank, open an IRA, save it for your future, do something positive with it. But that's what you can do with it. You can get the money earlier rather than waiting for it. So there isn't this magical pile of money at the IRS. It's just, they're just going to give you a refund and you don't have to do anything for it. You do have to do something for it. You have to file your taxes. You have to make sure that you're paying the right amount but not too much. All right, so this last little bit that I wanna go through is if you earn too much money, if you're actually over that 200 or that $400,000 threshold for income and you still have a qualifying child to make sure that you're maximizing your child tax credit. So it begins to phase out at 400,000 or 200,000. So let's take a look, I'm gonna put it up on the screen here and we can take a look. I've already gone through this again. So I put it as 420,000 for this walkthrough. So 420,000 is the income for this household, married filing jointly, one dependent, one child, one qualifying child. If we scroll down, look at that. They still qualify for the child tax credit. It's just beginning to phase out. So basically for each thousand dollars over 400,000 and 200,000 for singles, it's going to go down by $50. So if we look at that, we have 20. So if you do 20 times 50, that's a thousand dollars. So that's why we only got half. Now there's a couple of things that you can do. If you do make this kind of money, then you should save it pre-tax. So here's a good scenario when you want to focus on possibly the pre-tax dollars like the 401k versus the Roth IRA to help you reduce your total tax liability. So let's go to that first screen and I can show you what that looks like. So if we go here, and, or excuse me, that second screen, that is where our 401k is. So let's say we have the 401k and we're going to make a $19,000 a year contribution. Now for here, we could, we could have put 19.5 because that's what it is for 2020. 
So 19.5, you click next. Click next, next. Let's see those results. Now let's scroll down. So it reduced our total taxable income. You can see it right there. So our total pre-tax income was 420. We put in 19.5. And what we're left with is a net income of $400,500. So let's scroll down. So what do we think that's going to be? That's looks like it's going to be reduced by, so it's going to be reduced by what? About $25? Is that what it's going to be? Our child tax credit. There we go. Child tax credit, $1,975. $1,975. So that is how you could reduce your total tax liability just by making sure that you're saving, not only saving, but saving into the right accounts. So that is the difference between the Roth IRA and the 401k. I, I just like to point those things out because there's just so much stuff out there that says the Roth IRA, Roth IRA, Roth IRA, it's the greatest investment vehicle ever. It's pretty good, but it's not always the right choice. So here was another scenario when the 401k could be a better choice. Could be, not always, but it could be a better choice for your particular situation. Now on the flip side, if you don't have any income and you're single or you don't have any income and you're married filing jointly, then get some income because getting an extra $2,000 just to earn $2,500, that's a huge bump in your pay. It's almost 100% rate of return, almost, but not quite. Um, so you want to make sure that you're paying attention to the income levels. So that's a child tax credit. Make sure that if you do qualify for it, that you're filling out your W-4 correctly, that you're filling out your taxes correctly, and that you qualify for the child tax credit. And if you do get a refund, save it. Save it into a retirement account and then go back to your W-4 and make the adjustment so you're not getting as big a refund. You're going to get a bigger paycheck. But as soon as you do it, make sure that you set up the savings plan because you're gonna get really used to that income and that paycheck coming through the door if it's a little bit bigger than it used to be. And then before you know it, you're gonna get comfortable with that income. And if you're gonna miss out on some, then you're gonna miss out on some savings. So maximize your savings, make sure that you're looking at this stuff, look at your W-4, look at the child tax credit, fill out your taxes, and hopefully you're better off. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and leave your comments down at the bottom.